Hi all, and welcome to first year of your LET studies. Before getting to the course content, I will shortly int introduce myself. My name is Ina Holoppa, and I'm second year master's student in the L uh, ITE program here in the University of Oulu. And for the summer, I have been university intern in the LET program. The topic of this lecture video is Foundation of Learning Theories. Let's get started. The end of learning theories studies how people learn and how learning can be supported. Learning involves acquiring and modifying knowledge, skills, strategies, beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. Throughout the years, different theorists have been interested in learning and development of competencies and provided different explanations for this phenomenon. In this lecture video, we are taking a glimpse to the main theories on individual learning, behaviorism, cognitivism, and constructivism. Let's start with behaviorism. Beginning of the 19th century focused on behavioristic views of learning. Behavioristic conceptualized learning as a process of forming connection between stimuli and responses. Motivation to learn was assumed to be driven primarily by drives, such as hunger and the availability of external forces, such as rewards and punishments. Therefore, learning process could be defined by the change in behavior of the learner. In the learning process, the learner is seen in a passive role. The learning occurs through positive and negative reinforcements of the environment, or so to say, trial and error methodology, where successful responses are established and unsuccessful responses are abandoned. Thus, satisfying or rewarding consequences are learned by consequences resulting to punishment are not. Behaviorists argue that rewarding consequences are a more effective way to alter behavior where punishment is not, because it does not teach the correct and rewarding ways, only thinks of what one is not to do. Learner continues trial error methodology for as long as the learner finds the satisfying consequences. Can you think of any examples from your own experience? In 19th century, a lot of this behavioristic research has been conducted on animals. Therefore, it is justified to criticize how applicable it is actually to humans. Skinner is one of the leading behavioristic theorists, and he is also founding father of Skinner's Box and a teaching machine in the end of 1950s. Skinner's teaching machine is presented in the picture and next to it is a spelling exercise. Skinner developed the teaching machine to overcome the inefficiency of classroom learning. He adapted the techniques he used to train pigeons and rats to teach humans. However, similar problems were faced by the schools as today. The learning machines were expensive to afford. In the slide, you also find a link to video where Skinner further introduces his machine. Please take a look. Cognitivism emerged in late 1950s. Albert Bandura challenged the behavioristic view of learning by demonstrating that individuals can learn new actions merely by observing others to perform them. Thus, researching the complexity of understanding human connection to the environment became field of interest. Learning started to be viewed from a multidisciplinary perspective that extended across many fields. Therefore, also the learner started to be seen as an active actor in the center of learning process, which opposes the view on passive and me mechanic learning. Dewey is famous for his learning by doing ideology, where doing is a key factor to which thoughts and ideas are connected to. Thus, 
learning occurs through active participation and experiences. At the time, the importance of concept of metacognition materialized. Metacognition can be defined as ability to monitor one's level of understanding and ability to reflect on what and how one learns. Metacognition is cornerstone of human cognition, as it refers to individuals' ability on learning and understanding. Metacognitive thinking aids learning process because the learner is able to focus on sense-making, self-assessment, and reflection over what worked, what needs improving, and utilize this information for further learning. However, learner needs to learn how efficiently monitor and self-regulate their learning. Therefore, in the current national curriculum of Finland, the learning to learn skills are emphasized extensively. Let's take a look on technological invention of 1960s. Kai Computer Assisted Instruction is an interactive tutoring system for students. Operation of system depends on material or frames that are entered in advance by the teacher. These typically contain text, specific questions and the answers, and keywords in multiple choice type. Scholar can also generate questions and evaluate the student's answers, deciding when these are correct, wrong or only partially correct, which follow according actions. It keeps track on content and changes it on basis of relevancy and time considerations. Limitations of CHI are that the student has little or no initiative and cannot use natural language in responses. Also, the system looks fairly rigid. The teacher has to prepare all questions, answers, keywords and branching in advance. In point of view of the system, the system controls the student. However, it is programmed by the teacher and thus does not have real initiative, decision-making power or knowledge of its own. Hence, it can be argued that Kai does little, little more than a programmed textbook. Pause the video here and take a closer look on learning situation between learner and the schooler. Let's continue. At the end of the 19th century, constructivism continued the cognitive idea of learning and supplanted the behavioristic view of learning. Constructivistic view records that knowledge of an individual is constructed through social interaction in the given environment. Constructivists assume that all knowledge is constructed from previous knowledge irrespective of how one is taught. Even listening to a lecture, as what you're doing right now, involves active attempts to construct new knowledge. Also, constructivism sees learner in an active role. Piaget can be argued to be one originator of constructivism. He introduced view where learning occurs through construction of schemas or mental objects. He argues that in the learning process, individual actively adapts to the physical and social environment. In order to comprehend and assimilate into the environment, individual applies all the prior knowledge or schemas to success. Assimilation to new environment requires reorganization of schemas so the individual can control surrounding environment and accommodate into it. Such series of actions take place in an interactive learning process. Constructivism is a general concept that includes number of approaches, radical constructivism and social constructivism being the most known. Radical constructivists, such as one Clausers felt proposes that there cannot be external truth because we all construct our own personal realities. In the other hand, 
social constructivists such as Vygotsky represent that process process of constructing knowledge occurs through social interactions, including use of language. In the following lessons, you will take closer look at the social constructivism, since our modern understanding and learning process is greatly influenced by Piaget, Vygotskyan and other constructivist theories. Furthermore, in 1970s, artificial intelligence started to take their position in education, such as computers, as a tool to construct individual knowledge. Here is an example of IBM PC on the background, which was released in 1981. In 1990s, internet started to become a common platform for a variety of usage. This also opened educational opportunities on how the technological development could be exploited with learning theories. Thus, at the end of 1990s, perception of learning with technology spread, which regarded technology as a tool for students to collect, analyze, construct, and understand information. Internet is a learning platform with all various possibilities, providing an open learning environment which emphasizes constructivism as the student needs to actively construct knowledge. This encourages self-direction of individual as well as interactive and communal learning. However, I'm sure you get very familiar with this topic in the future of your studies. In the end, there are a couple of links for further information and inquiry. Please take a look on them. As a conclusion, why do we need to know and understand these theories on learning? Understanding learning foundation theories, as well as their origins, is enlightening because they help to understand what aspects are core commitments of the field, what aspects are hidden assumptions, and what aspects might merely be accidents of history. Or what do you think? What is the importance of foundational learning theories on modern education? If any questions arise, please share them in your digital learning environment or bring them with you to the contact lesson. Thank you for your interest.